Hey, g'day, it's uh, Sharpie from Sharp Tooling here. Um, so after yesterday's work I did on the, the rear of the car and I went through the, um, the rear bearings, overhauled them and uh, really uh, had a good look at uh, how the 3XF hub nuts are doing a great job on the rear. In fact, you'll probably see them, uh, you will see them if you look back on my other uh, videos previous on YouTube just from yesterday. Um, I've moved to the front to start doing a bearing service on this. And now it's the same scenario where, uh, as per the old videos, it's been uh, a long time since I've really managed to get in and have an inspection of the spindle bearing to see how my spindle greaser tool is been performing. So, all right, let's break it back to the beginning. I uh, have uh, invented and uh, been manufacturing this spindle greaser tool for a very long time now. And uh, what the tool does is it's a grease, uh, a grease connector, which allows grease to shoot straight through to the spindle bearing in the inside of the spindle here without having to do any major disassembly. Although I've got the hub and rotor off this at the moment, I've already taken it off for a bearing service. So, when I run through uh, with you on how to use it, I'll show you how to use it with the hub off and also back with the hub on, which is an even quicker job. And then if you're, if you're just doing a bearing adjustment, you just use it. So what is the spindle bearing, you might ask? So this is the spindle, and that is uh, the same item that is on there. The spindle on the outside here holds your wheel bearings and your hub and your rotor. On the inside, it locates your CV shaft. So this face on the CV shaft here is a bearing face, which runs in there like that. And it just turns, whenever you've got your freewheeling hubs locked in and you're in four wheel drive, this CV shaft is running like that. If you've got a full time four wheel drive, like an 80 series or something like that, this CV is running full time. So. Inside the, of the spindle here, we have a very fine spindle bearing. Now you may be able to see that there, camera lady, and see the spindle bearing in there working. So, when I first uh, came about inventing the spindle greaser and getting it onto the market, uh, there was a, a big increase in complaints online about people having spindle bearings fail when they are in extreme circumstances or just through lack of maintenance, because not everyone maintains their cars properly, yet alone disassembles everything, just to dab a bit of grease onto this bearing. It takes time and it's, it's, I've always called it by this name. It's the most unloved bearing on your Land Cruiser. It's, most of us don't even know it's there. So, uh, there was a, an increase in complaints of uh, people when they got dirt, dust, water, uh, inside uh, this cavity here because there's a cavity in between the CV shaft and the spindle. So you can see there, there's clearance in between that shaft and the inside of the spindle. So if you do do a bit of mud work or something like that, water can make it past the seals in through here and make its way and start sitting in your spindle bearing. Uh, so with this, when a spindle bearing fails, it starts to lock up on your CV shaft. And if you've got a locked up CV shaft when you're in the outback, um, you're in for a hard time unless you can disassemble it, replace the shaft, uh, replace the bearing, uh, you're having problems. So it's all about the preventative maintenance. Don't be reactive with your maintenance, be preventative. So how the spindle greaser works is, it's really, really, really quite simple. Again, like with all the products I make, they're all very, very simple. So I'll do it on this, so I'm not holding that. This is a uh, alloy CNC machine locally here in Adelaide uh, grease connector that has got the same thread as what's on the end of the spindle here with correct clearance to allow the axle uh, to locate in there. And it screws directly on to the spindle like so. So now in doing this, what you've done there, especially when the hub is on, You've created a, a, a mating face up against the star lock washer, which locks your hub nuts in place for the front. From here, you simply get your grease gun and shoot grease clean, direct 
straight through the cavity here into the cavity between the inside diameter of the spindle and the outside of the shaft. The grease runs then directly down the shaft into the spindle bearing and overflows into your into, inside of your steering knuckle. So being a, a, a fine needle bearing, we use a high temperature, uh, high speed wheel bearing grease in this, which is uh, no issue because the ins it just goes into the inside of the knuckle anyway. So where they call for being molly being used in the steering knuckle is in the CV shaft and uh, that's all pre-packed anyway. You've got bearings top and bottom there. So the main thing is you cannot use molly on this bearing because it will just seize up. So high temperature bearing grease is the way to go. Now, uh, so I did a swivel hub rebuild on this uh, knuckle here. Just one seat, 315k ago. It was on 315k, I did a swivel hub rebuild, and now I'm on 380. So 65,000 k since I've done a swivel hub rebuild on this, and it's fine, I don't need to do another one. But I haven't looked at the condition of the uh, spindle bearing inside here after using my spindle greaser over an extended amount of time. Uh, because it's a very simple tool. It gets grease in there, it does its job. It's not a matter of whether it's going to uh, decrease the life of the bearing because that's impossible. If you've got grease getting to your bearing, it's only going to increase the life of it. So um, at 315, I did the swivel hub. Uh, 10k later, I checked my bearings and I put the spindle greaser on, squirted some more grease in there. At 335, I checked the play of my bearings again, shot some more grease in there. So since the swivel hub rebuild has had two applications of grease, and now I'm on 380K. So 335, so it's 45,000K ago, same as the rear, I went right around this vehicle. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna knock this spindle off right now, and I'm gonna have a look inside and see how this spindle, how the spindle bearing looks after being fitted 65,000Ks ago and having two applications of grease in that time and the last one was 45,000 k's ago. So I'm gonna pull it apart now and we'll have a look at the condition of the bearing. So uh, yeah, just taking this spindle off, I've just uh, brought back a memory that I've actually got uh, another product right here that I have no longer been making because I didn't really sell many of them. So, you know, it's not a, it's not a line that I continue with now, but it's my brake backing uh, plate delete. So you notice that I don't have a brake backing plate uh, sitting here. Uh, I'm not chose to make a brake pack and backing delete kit to um, remove my brake backing plate off the rotor so I can keep the front rotors more cool. And that is simply this spacer here which uh, packs the uh, hub seal back out to the correct position when you remove the backing plate from behind it. So that's just another little thing I just uh, Kind of forgot about it after all these years. Anyway, so let's um, knock this off now. We'll have a look what's going on with the uh, spindle inside. Whoa! Holy me. Look at that. How beautiful is that? So that goes to show there is grease all the way up that shaft. So it's not dry. That's helping uh, repel any water. The lubrication inside that bearing there, it's absolutely full of grease as you can see. So the spindle greaser undeniably is a tool that works so much better than just dabbing a touch of grease in there when you do a swivel hub rebuild and uh, then forgetting about it for the life of the vehicle. So if we all think about, you know, if we did a swivel hub rebuild every 100,000 Ks, that 100,000 Ks, you do a lot of trips. Like in the time with the 65,000 Ks I've had this, I've been, uh, yeah, Tassie up to 
Northern Territory, over into WA. I've been a lot of places in this car. So to know that this tiny little bearing in here is always full of grease, simply by ensuring I'm slamming some more grease in there with the spindle grease at all, I'm happy as all hell. So that's a real good result after the time frame of not visually getting in there and having a look at this. So another thing you might notice is uh, the type of grease that I'm using here. So I always use uh, Inox MX-8 or the Neulon uh, Extreme. So that's a PTFE uh, style grease. Um, and now both companies claim uh, that their grease is good for CV shafts, uni joints, ball joints and high speed bearings. So it's a one stop grease. So me personally, I don't bother about putting molly grease uh, in these, when I rebuilt everything last time, it all got the Inox MX-8. And uh, that's why this grease is already in there. So I don't worry about getting my greases mixed up and I don't worry about grease contamination with having a molly and having a high speed uh, bearing grease in there, mixing up and making it look like a mess in there. So yeah, I'm absolutely stoked with that result. That is, that is beautiful. And as you can see in there, look at that. 65,000 Ks, that bearing is still just turning like a brand new one. Another thing we should really have a look at, considering that we're here, is uh, simply having a look at the uh, the mating face on the CV shaft. Let's have a look at that. I'm not gonna pull the CV out because it doesn't require it. Beautiful, you know? A few little uh, marks on there, but this car's done 380,000 Ks and these are original Toyota CVs. So, they're still in perfect condition, if you ask me. So, um, yeah, absolutely stoked to know that the grease that goes through here is filling my steering knuckle and keeping everything lubricated in there beautifully. And the grease would make it way around and also into the CV. It's keeping your bearings on the bottom there. You know, there's grease everywhere up the top on the top bearing. So, spindle greaser, uh, spindle greaser for the win. Absolutely stoked. So, uh, I've got the uh, spindle back on there with my uh, brake backing pl delete plate and the, the hub seal. So now that's all back assembled here again, I will uh, just show you quickly how to use the spindle greaser tool with the um, hub and everything removed. So if you just give us a second, I'll quickly organize the uh, grease gun and I'll be straight back. All right, so I've got my spindle greaser tool, grease gun. I've just got the uh, Inox MX-8 in this once again. So basically, how many pumps of grease is a question all my customers always ask me. And I'm like, how big's your grease gun? Is it pneumatic? Is it by hand? I don't know the volume that it actually pumps. So it's really up to your own judgment on how much grease you think it's gonna need to fill the cavity inside here, outside of that uh, there, and also the cavity inside there to reach up to the spindle bearing. So with me, it takes about 10, 10 to 15 pumps of grease just to fill the cavity in here before it starts pushing along. So I'll give it about 30 to 40 pumps. But now that I've had a look in here and I see how much grease, now I'm just gonna give it a bit less than that today, um, cause it's actually quite full. I only wanted to get to the spindle bearing and no more. So. You know what, for the bugger, for the exercise, I'll just stick 40 pumps in there, it's not hurting. So, one other thing I do do before I uh, remove or pump any grease in, I simply remove the uh, this uh, hex nut up here. So, um, I'll just uh, grab myself a uh, 13 mil spanner to do that. And uh, yeah, my mistake, 12 mil, not 13. So, uh, why I remove this uh, plug from the top of the knuckle, is just to allow air to escape from the knuckle when we're pushing some grease through. Uh, is it critical? Well, you know, I believe that air is gonna escape out your, your back of your seals through there because they're not a perfect water tight, air tight seal anyway. But it's just gonna take a bit of stress off the uh, seals at the back and uh, allow the air out. So let's do that. Remove that off. Oh, it's even got grease right at the top up there. Beautiful. So, without the hub on, you can simply screw the spindle greaser directly onto the end of the spindle. When it locks up, you can feel it 
that's the face inside here meeting up with the end of the axle. So just a couple of winds off, so it's not fully locked on. And yeah, 40 pumps of grease is always gonna get the grease through to you. So I'll just quickly pump that out now. So, that there, that's all good. Bit of two-handed action here. You can put your plug back in the top, make sure that's all tight. We'll uh, open this up, show you. So, there you go. That's how the grease action works. It's simply a capillary action where the grease is filled inside the uh, spindle greaser and it's pressure pumps like a capillary action and it pushes straight down into here and fills up the spindle uh, bearing with the grease. So that's how you use it with the, the hub off. And uh, I will uh, now, I'll just, uh, I should really just leave that off, I'm gonna show you the second way. But I will just grab my old uh, hub and rotor off the bench, which I haven't cleaned up yet for the bearing, uh, wheel bearings, but I'll come and quickly put them straight back on and show you how you do this when the hub is still intact. So yeah, I'll be straight back. All right, so, uh... I've just quickly grabbed the rotor, bearings, hub assembly off the bench, just throwing it back on to simulate how you would uh, attack this job if you were just doing uh, tyre rotation. And uh, when you're doing your tyre rotation, you should be feeling the front wheel bearings for any play, because uh, you'll know then you'll need to adjust your bearings. So if you're not doing that on a tyre rotation, you really should bring that into part of your habit every time a front wheel off the ground just grab it and feel for play so uh, obviously you would have your freewheeling uh, locking mechanism freewheeling hub and uh, that's all removed from here so when you'd open it up you got your lock washer which is the, uh, the, the lock nut which is the first nut which uh, locks the assembly into place so when you're doing a wheel bearing adjustment uh, it's as simple as this you do remove the lock washer You can do all this with a wheel on, by the way. Uh, you remove, uh, did I say lock washer? You remove the lock nut, remove your star tabbed lock washer, which as we all know, bends over the, the edges of the, the, the flats of the nut to hold it in place. And when it's in this position here, you'd have your tool and you would retention your bearings as per whatever you feel so you can get rid of any play there. Once you're happy with your wheel bearing preload, that's when you'll start to do your reassembly. So you reassemble it, put your star tab washer back on. This washer is just, uh, I found it just an easy way of doing it because it creates a touch of a, a good seal there, it touches on the face of the uh, spindle greaser and also the face of the washer. So just simply uh, screw the spindle greaser on so it uh, is tight up against that star washer and uh, which at that point there, grab your grease gun and give it the 40 pumps of grease. So uh, it's as simple as that. So when you're doing a wheel bearing adjustment, you can use this spindle grease and it will take literally the time I just took. You screw it on, 40 pumps of grease, unscrew it. Well, that's a minute or 90 seconds per side to pump grease right through to your spindle bearing and uh, ensure the longevity and have the internals of a steering knuckle looking like mine were just before. Uh, so you can even use the spindle bearing uh, easy enough even if you don't need a, a wheel bearing adjustment, but be aware that if you do remove this lock nut, it's possible that your bearing preload could change. So you will always need to double check your bearing preload after using the spindle grease. So in a nutshell, that's it, it's the Sharp Tooling Spindle Greaser. Uh, all supporting local jobs in South Australia, locally machined, locally uh, manufactured, and uh, great little Aussie product. And as far as I'm concerned, if you work on your Land Cruiser, you need a spindle greaser in your toolbox. So thanks very much, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.